Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. I am a Microsoft PowerShell MVP and I am a solution architect with Project Leadership Associates, which is a Chicago-based professional services firm uh, that specializes in an array of Microsoft solutions. And we are a Microsoft Gold Partner. So if you have any uh, consulting needs around the Microsoft platform, please feel free to reach out to me or Project Leadership Associates directly. Today, I would like to talk to you about how to use PowerShell desired state configuration in conjunction with Microsoft Azure to provi provision Azure virtual machines using DSC functionality. So what do we mean by that? Well, basically what we wanna do is take a desired state configuration block and deploy it directly to our new Azure virtual machines so that they're prepared in the way that we want them as soon as they're provisioned when we build a new VM. So that's basically the topic we're gonna cover today. And in today's example, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy a bunch of custom DSC resources that are part of Microsoft's DSC resource kit. And we're gonna deploy those using PowerShell DSC out to an Azure virtual machine using the new uh, DSC extension for Azure VMs that was announced about a week ago. Uh, today is for the reference, August 21st, 2014. So the first thing that we need to do in order to deploy these custom resources is to build a configuration block. Now, before we actually get to building the configuration block, let's go ahead and go out to our web browser and take a look at the DSC resource kit. So Microsoft has published a variety of custom desired state configuration resources as part of this resource kit. And it was most recently updated today, August 21st, 2014, with some new resources. Now, Microsoft provides a variety of resources uh, for DSC that allow you to configure things like Active Directory domains, Azure resources, Google Chrome even, uh, database information, uh, DNS server information, Hyper-V configuration information, and a lot, lot more. So in order to manage our virtual machines in Azure, what we want to do is install these DSC resources that are part of this resource kit on all of our new VMs so that we can take advantage of their functionality. So how do we actually get this deployed out to a new Azure virtual machine from the get-go? Well, what we need to do is build a configuration block uh, for DSC. And what we're going to use is a couple of different built-in types of resources that come out of the box in the Windows operating system. So what we have here is a script resource that actually downloads the zip file locally onto the file system under the Windows temp directory using the invoke web request command that's built into PowerShell. Then we have an archive resource, which again is a built-in type of DSC resource in the Windows operating system. So we don't have to depend on any third-party functionality at this point in time. And what we do is we say that this archive resource depends on our script resource. So what is gonna happen here is the script resource will run first because it's a dependency for the archive resource. Once this script executes and downloads this file to the local file system, the archive resource is going to ensure that the zip file in this path here is extracted to the destination directory. Now the destination directory is the Microsoft standard location for system-wide PowerShell modules that you want to be installed on a given host. So what we're gonna do is put it under the C program files, Windows PowerShell modules directory, and that will allow DSC to see those resources when we actually utilize them on that target host. So now that we've defined the configuration block that's actually going to install these DSC resources from the zip file on the TechNet gallery, we now need to build a virtual machine. Now I've already gone ahead and gotten that process started so that we don't have to wait for the VM to provision, but I haven't actually logged into the VM yet, so we'll be logging into a brand new virtual machine when we actually get to that point. So I'd like to kind of step you through the process of actually building the virtual machine and using that new Azure DSC extension for VMs to deploy the DSC configuration that we just looked at here to that new VM. 
So the first thing is I'm going to assume that you've already installed the Azure PowerShell module and you've already configured the Azure PowerShell module to see your Azure subscriptions. So that's outside the scope of this video. But assuming that you've already performed those steps, the first thing we're going to do to build a VM is to select the appropriate Azure subscription. Now it's important to note that the Azure subscription name is case sensitive. So when you call select Azure subscription, if you use the incorrect case of uh, string characters for your subscription name, then that command will fail. So just be sure to use the actual subscription name exactly as it's configured. The next thing we want to do is create an affinity group. And an affinity group in Azure just allows us to geographically tie together resources for maximum performance. The next thing we're going to do is create an Azure storage account. And the storage account is what contains the actual VHD file for the virtual machine when we build it. Additionally, when you use the Azure DSC extension for VMs, the DSC configuration that you specify actually gets uploaded to that storage account. And then when you build the VM, it points to that storage account to get the DSC configuration. So a storage account is an essential piece of any Azure infrastructure that you're doing. The next thing we want to do is we want to actually grab this DSC configuration that we built in this DSC wave file. And we're going to publish that DSC configuration up to the Azure storage account like we just mentioned. Now to do that, we can use the publish Azure VM DSC configuration command. And we're going to point it to the PS1 file that contains our DSC configuration. Now the storage context parameter here uh, actually uses the storage credentials that we got by using new Azure storage context. And that's basically giving us permission or the password to write that DSC configuration directly to the Azure storage account. Now, the next thing we need to do is build an Azure cloud service. And the cloud service is basically a container that can host multiple Azure virtual machines. In the Azure platform, you cannot build a VM directly. It has to be a member of a cloud service. Now, the final thing we need to do is build the Azure virtual machine. Now, there's a few steps that we have to go through to actually build the VM. And the first step is we're going to specify the name we want for the VM. We specify the instance size. So do we want a single core, double core, a quad core machine? How much memory do we want? There's a bunch of standardized sizes out there pre-built for you. We also have to specify the image name. And if you don't know where to get the image name from, you can use the get Azure VM image command to look at a list of available Windows images uh, in the Azure platform that are pre-built so you don't have to upload your own custom image. Once we specify those settings in a hash table, we call new Azure VM config to create the initial VM configuration. There's a couple more steps we have to go through before we actually create the VM though. We have to add a provisioning configuration which specifies the administrative username and the password that we want to assign to that user. And we have to specify that this is a Windows VM and not a Linux VM. Next, we need to specify the settings for the VM DSC extension. Now this is actually what's going to tie the zip file that gets published up to the Azure storage account up in the DSC configuration section. And this is going to point our VM to that zip file and tell it what the name of the configuration is, which is right here in that configuration file. And we're basically going to tell the VM to go look at that configuration in that zip file that gets uploaded to the storage account. And then to configure the VM with those settings, we use the set Azure VM DS DSC extension command and pass in these parameters using the splatting technique from PowerShell. Now, once we've got this VM configuration finalized in this VM variable, we're going to go ahead and create our new Azure VM in the specified cloud service and using the specified VM configurations that we just built in this whole section here. Now, again, I've already gone through and built the virtual machine. So let's go ahead and RDP into that virtual machine using the get Azure remote desktop file command. So when we run this command, the, it goes out to the Azure platform and it actually creates 
an RDP file and launches it for us because we've specified the launch parameter over here. And all we have to do at that point is specify the password that we used to build the virtual machine. So once we RDP into this virtual machine, we'll go ahead and verify that the DSC extension that we created using this DSC config here has actually successfully executed. So what we're expecting again is for all these DSC resources that are part of this DSC resource kit uh, to get installed to that C program files Windows PowerShell modules directory. Now there's a couple of different ways to verify that. The first thing that we can do is we can launch a new PowerShell session and run the command called get DSC resource. Now get DSC resource is going to go out and query all the module directories on the current host to look for a list of uh, modules and resources specifically that are available. So as you can see, if you were to run get DSC resource on a bare bones Windows server, the only resources that you would see show up are these first few here. And since you can see all these other ones like x80 domain and so on and so forth, all these Azure DSC or all these DSC resources got installed through the Azure DSC extension successfully. So the other way we can validate this is to go to the program files directory on the file system, look at Windows PowerShell, and then go to the modules directory. As you can see, the module has been extracted to this directory, and we have all of these resources available to us. If you were to build an Azure VM without using that DSC extension to install these uh, DSC resources from that zip archive, then you would not have these available by default. But because we're using this functionality, we can build brand new VMs that automatically install these DSC resources. Now the final way that we can do some validation on an Azure virtual machine is that we can go to the C directory and go under Windows Azure, which contains uh, detailed logging information about the Windows Azure guest environment, so the guest VM environment. You can drill down into the logs directory, go to plugins, and then you'll see the DSC VM Azure extension, uh, and then a version number under there, and you'll see this DSC boot script. And the DSC boot script is basically the file that logs the operations of the Azure VM DSC extension. So when we deployed that custom DSC configuration to our Azure VM, it was processed and all the logs got uh, inserted into this DSC boot file here. So if we just kind of go through and examine this, we can basically see that the archive resource that we created as part of that DSC wave configuration did successfully execute. And at the very end, we'll see some log information that basically says that the zip file was successfully unpacked to the program files directory. So that's all there really is to it. Basically, just to recap, you're going to build your configuration for DSC. You're going to test that out locally before you do anything else. Then you're going to build your Azure virtual machine, and you're going to use the DSC extension commands in the Azure PowerShell module to assign that configuration to the VM. Again, it's set Azure VM DSC, DSC extension. You specify the configuration archive, which is the zip file and the name of the configuration that was declared in the configuration file. Now, just to touch on one last thing, remember how I said that the uh, DSC configuration got uploaded to the storage account separately? Well, if we go ahead and actually look at that storage account and we look at the uh, containers inside of it, so let's run get Azure storage container. We'll specify the storage context, which we already have in a variable here from the script. So we're going to get a list of containers inside of that storage account. And as you can see, the Azure PowerShell DSC extension automatically creates this Windows PowerShell DSC container. If we get a list of blobs inside that container, so get Azure storage blob, specify the storage context again, and then specify the container name, which is Windows PowerShell DSC, we will see that there is a DSC wave blob 
that represents the configuration that we pushed using publish Azure VM DSC configuration. So this command here takes that configuration from the PS1 file, pushes it up to the storage account, and then when we actually build the VM, the VM pulls the zip file from the storage account. So I hope that this was educational. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Thank you.